But we, we wanted to see if these people would put their money where their mouth is because they protest uh, the government. They want the government to bring in refugees. So um, not K. Jared had the brilliant idea. We called many of these progressive churches to see. Well, you can take a look for yourself. Heart House, this is Krista. Hi, Krista. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Um, it, it, my name is Grant Mayo. I'm with the Institute for Saving Immigrants from Syria, and I wanted to know if there was someone there um, with whom I could speak regarding uh, just sort of partnership. We are asking for no money. Uh, I represent Refugee Affairs Placement Enterprise, and we're just looking for compassionate, progressive Christian allies. Well, I, I'm actually calling from the uh, the Justice for Immigration Humanitarian Aid Division. My name is Grant Mayo. Krista, can you tell me a little more? Sure. My name is Grant Mayo. I'm with the Bureau of United United Transatlantic Transit for Understanding, Caring, and Kindness. It's an organization that deals currently right now with the uh, refugee crisis. And with a search online, your church uh, showed up as just truly a, a beacon of, of progress and uh, uh, compassion. And we wanted to see who we could speak with there and partnering up and, uh, and providing as well as receiving some assistance. And your church uh, is very public about your, your progressivism, correct? Yes, thank you. Well, it's just very impressive. It's it's very Christ-like to open the doors, you know, wide open without so much as security clearance. We've seen online about the current refugee situation and the need to help them. I think uh, we're both on board with that, correct? Yes. Okay, so how many can I put you down for? I'll have to get back with you on that. Well, I mean, time is of the essence. We have some people here who've obviously come over, uh, you know, on planes, and uh, some by land, some by sea, land or sea or foam, correct? You know, just want to see how many you can house there at your church. Um, we currently don't have the, um, you know, space or room to house them in house. But I would have to, that's something we would surely, you know, have to discuss and see if we can make provisions for that and give you a call back. Okay, but you do, you have supported uh, taking in refugees, correct? I don't, I don't want to be no. out of... No, not here, not, not here, not in the church. Not in, okay, not but, here. but you have in general the being compassionate. Yes. yes. Yes, we have. Just not in your church. No, no, just not in our church. So we have to, like, you know, put in provision for that. R really quickly, what about you yourself? How many refugees have, have you taken in? I haven't taken any. Oh, well, that's perfect. We have two right now who are ready to go. They're fantastic. They're very friendly. I don't have the space and the capacity right now. You don't have space. You don't have space in your heart? <laughs> well, I, I want to make sure off the bat, though, I'm not mistaken in understanding that church is a, is a progressive church, correct? Very much so. Let me ask you, before, we, before I give you my information, how many refugees have you um, housed there at the church? We're trying to take a, a little bit of a, of a survey here. Um, we don't house them within the church building. Do you know anyone there who has? any Anyone who has personally taken one into their home or a church personally who's housed them? Like I say, we don't, that's not what we do here. Sure. No, that wouldn't we, be we expected. We don't have refugees, right? No, no, we wouldn't expect you to do that. But, but speaking out in support of it is certainly almost the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I'm, I'm not sure what you're asking. Well, we have, well, I know the church's position has been to support uh, the helping of the needy and refugees. And we have refugee elementary children um, who we are bringing, again, Justice for Immigration Humanitarian Aid Division. And since uh -huh. that is your department at the church, I would just like to know, um, you know, how, how many we could, we could bring in there that you could help oh. out. Well, I'll tell you what, my philosophy is I don't turn anybody away. Sure. So, how, okay. And um, if there's something that we, a program that we offer that, that anybody would be interested in, um, you know, sure. we'll be happy to help in any way we can. Sure. So like housing. We need to what do you mean? Well, we need to house refugee children. We, oh, they need a place to live. No, we, well, I, I, have, I'm, I have no, air, no um, inkling on how to approach anything like that at all. I, oh, it's very my, simple. You open your door and your heart. <laughs> well, yeah, my position here is to provide faith formation programs for children and families. Sure, sure, sure. So how many can we put your department down for? You mean to come here for faith formation? Yes, and to, for faith formation, certainly. And, you know, food, shelter, sleeping bags if you have them. 
I can handle the part about faith formation, but that's sure. about it. But what better social services program than the body of Christ? I mean, that's that's the goal in all of this. Is to... Yeah, but what I'm saying is we don't have a facility here where people can, can sleep and shower and eat and stuff like that. Oh, you don't have bathrooms there? No. Well, we have we have restrooms, but they're in the school. Oh, well, perfect. There you go. There, there's room in the school. Yeah, right. Try that. Um, I, th- well, I, I, and I understand. Believe me, I understand where you're coming from. It is not without its concern for the other children, obviously, when we're talking right. about assimilation. And, and, and some of these children, frankly, act out uh, very violently. Do you know if the church has taken in, uh, at least as I call back down my list, has this no, church taken in? No, they haven't because there's nowhere to put them. What about the homes of the pastors or, or yourselves? Do you have room for a small child in your heart? You know what? This is really a good idea for us to talk about here. Yes, but we're, we're I'm not so glad we're to talking. Do anything today, but maybe this is something we should talk about. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Why but, don't you call me back in a couple of weeks, and hopefully I'll you know see what I can do. Oh, but they'll be deported by then. That's the issue is with the the immigration ban right now. You know they're yeah. here currently. Well, there isn't anybody here right now today for me to talk to. Well, you and can I don't talk have to this child. To give you a yes or no answer. This that's this child just wants someone to talk to. Tell Anna me t- what your name is again. My name is Grant Mayo with the Justice for Immigration Humanitarian Aid Division. E R okay. Yeah, and that's Mayo M E O. Not some people think like mayonnaise and they shorten it, uh-huh. and that's just grossly offensive. <laughs> but even you know, listen, if it's temporary, if if you or or just a member who's there right now who has you know an extra cot, there's no one here for me to run this through to get approval. Sure. No, but I mean individuals. You can just start calling down the list and see if people have room. That's what we're looking for. Right. Yeah, I would have to get permission to be able to do that. Sure. Who, so do okay. you need permission from your husband? True. Well, let's, let's get him on the line. I mean, listen, these, these kids come from a very patriarchal society. They'd be very understanding. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> It's great to have social programs, but obviously these, these, these people need a place to live and, and resettle. You know, there's no after-school program for somebody who doesn't even have a house to, to, to take a bus from to school, you understand? <laughs> right. We just serve the, the children here. Okay, so you serve the children. Well, I just so happen to have children uh, ages 4 and 13. 13's at that problem age, you know, but, um, but good kids really good kids and uh we we need to find a place for them what about you yourself are you know I, we've opened our houses personally we know people have been calling for this we're just looking for true progressives to open their their homes and hearts is that something you'd consider i am not in a place to do that right now well, why not i'm a student and i am about to get married and so that's not something that i could do but there is another place but you do you do sup- you do encourage others to do so most definitely yes okay so it's you do so you're we're on board other people should be doing this you're just you're naturally you're getting married and, and you're a student so you can't do it right now correct do you know the problem is a 13 year old here um madula Ambangata cannot cannot wait because he may be shipped right back you know, there are people who've been, uh, you, I'm sure you've heard about the ban, the crisis, where they've come here and they may have to go back if they're from the seven countries. And I mean, we need to resettle them now. You know, we, we don't have time for someone to call us back two weeks in and, and then, you know, offer them, uh, offer them, you know, some intramural basketball. Okay, well, I'm sorry. We're definitely not the place um, for that. Hi, this is Melissa. I'm the operations manager. Um, what is it that you need? Hi, Melissa. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you. Good. This is Grant Mayo uh, with the Institute for Saving Immigrants from Syria, and we work to resettle uh, refugees. We have just been coming up against a dead end, Melissa. We have been okay. trying to get these poor uh, people coming from war-torn countries, refugees, mm-hmm. um, many of whom are still you know, middle-aged uh, males, into homes here. And there are a lot of organizations who, who have extracurricular activities, who have support groups, but right. we need homes. And we wouldn't be able to do any of that. What about you, Melissa? Do you have a spare bedroom? No, I don't. <laughs> really? It's, I don't. I mean, even if it's just, you know, for a temporary amount of time. 
Uh, I was, don't have a spare. Mm-mm, I don't have a spare anything. Did anyone mm-hmm. in your family or any of your friends? What about anyone in the organization? Anyone there who could actually open? I mean, I have four right now, and believe me, I've I've yeah. rescued animals as well, you know. And and I am my home is just a revolving door of people who need help. It's not without its problems, you know. My daughters weren't huge fans for a little while, but it has been a very rewarding experience, and I yeah. just. You... Absolutely, and I, I I get it because, like I said, we work with our kids who are refugees, so we've heard the sure. horror story and we've heard everything. I mean, that's where our heart and our passion lies. Oh, what horror um, so stories? We, we what, understand um, that it's a crisis situation, an emergency situation. Sure. But like I said, our organization doesn't do anything like that. No, 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 since, no, not the organization. Just any of the uh, people there. And but since you called our organization. You can't really ask me on a personal level or my family if we can open our home. So you could try like residential homes or calling people's individual. Oh, do you live in a corporate homes, office? Individual personal numbers. PO but box. This is a place for that since we're a nonprofit. Sure. So I have to say no. Sure. And you, I hope I hope you have a lot of luck with the your search. Sounds like you're doing really rewarding things. But, but we're not getting anything done. No one will take these people in. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Well, I wish I could say the same. Thanks. No. <laughs> hey, if you like this video, subscribe by clicking the button that says subscribe. If you're not aware of it now, there's no way you're learning the internet at this point. I'm not going to help you. But this was clipped from my daily show, available exclusively to lotterwithcredit.com slash mug club members. If you're a student, military, or veteran, enter in that promo code. It's less than $6 a month, and you get daily content. No more clips, plus this hand-etched mug. Oh, I just, when I feel it, I got a chill, like, on the inside.